I always look to build lightweight, low power, efficient 24 by 7 running, compact and fanless PC, which can do office work like running Windows 11 or can be used as a home lab hypervisor running VMware, Proxmox, can pass through all the hardware. It would be great if it can be used to run like 40 terabyte of NAS storage, especially running true NAS scale. Potential to use up to 10 GB of network speed. And how about top it off with like zero noise? Fanless model using all the latest 2022 or 2023 hardware so that it's good for at least four or five years of support. And all that costs less than $300. Are you in the market for something similar? Then let's take a look at this mini PC I am looking at. It's fanless, 10 watt of TDP, has USB C, quad 2.5G NIC ports, dual NVMe connections, uh, both are X1, or one NVMe connection with X2 speed. Dual SATA connection, you know, that's where that 40 terabyte came from. 64 GB of RAM, obviously upgradable. I like many PC, which you can modify and change the component. CPU is the only one which is soldered, but you can change the disk, NVMe drives, as well as the memory. And this PC can run three 60 Hertz display. So at high level, 2023 version of mini PC cost $195. You can add about 500 GB of SSD, $40. And I would prefer from Samsung, this is reliable as well as it works with VMware. So VMware is very picky about the hardware. So the NIC works on that and that's a beautiful part. 16 GB of RAM, which is gonna cost $30. In this particular test setup, I'm using 32 GB of RAM. Total is about $255. I looked around and compared every option available in the market. Let's look at some of the other competitor, which with the similar specs, I was very interested in Govin R86S, which has two SFTP plus ports. Though these ports are older generation, no more supported in VMware 8. So that's not exactly going towards future proofing. It has three 2.5G NIC, which is great. Another problem, it's not fanless, so it's gonna make a noise. Typically, NVMe drives has very good latency and speed. So even 1x is sufficient to get most out of it. One of the other thing to consider is this model has better CPU capabilities, higher turbo frequency, plus at the same time, TDP is 15 watt compared to 10 watt of the PC. And here is the high level of uh, specs. I, I believe this is very good model if you are okay with the price and if you're really looking to get a core i5 or i3 in that respect. Now this model, just came in. It's probably a few days back when it started available on AliExpress. And as you can see, this one is also fanless. So that's beautiful. The one challenge here is that it doesn't have USB-C connectivity. If you're buying a mini PC in 2023 and it doesn't have USB-C, which means you are losing all those, you know, KVM and docking capabilities uh, via USB-C plus obvious speeds. Are. And then you can drive a 4K 60p display from it. So this model is missing that. And that's one of the reason for me to skipping it. Price-wise, this is pretty okay. It does have PCI 3.0 X4 and HDMI DP, very fantastic. So two displays, that's pretty much covered most of the typical home users. And it comes with DDR5 memory. So that is very, very good thing if you're looking to be on the latest and cutting edge technology. When I ordered this model, this piece was not available uh, in the fanless model. It was available in the normal model. If you buy, go for a non-fanless model in this case, you can get it for about $150 for N100. Now the next competitor is this guy, Intel Note 13 Pro Arena Canyon Tall pre-built. This just got released this month only. And this is amazing. It has everything way better than what you can do with the machine. The only and only challenge I'm seeing is that it doesn't, it's not fanless. So basically you can buy some of the Astra kits once it's available for this model. And then you can basically install in that and then you get the fanless. But by the time you buy this and get to that model, you are looking at almost $900. It has two Thunderbolt 4 ports, so you are completely feature-proof in that sense. Only issue is one 2.5 gig NIC, which doesn't make sense at this point, but you can use the Thunderbolt 4 port to connect to, you know, 10 gig NIC. I went for a fanless model. Plus cost is very high. One amazing benefit of this product is that this is super powerful machine. Though so if you look at these chart, 
you can see that this particular Arena Canyon model, idle power consumption is just 5 watt, under 5 watt, compared to 13 watt, which our current model is doing. So yes, idle power is uh, much less. So this is Intel product, so obviously it's highly tuned. Money is not a concern and fanless is not your priority. You can, you can be okay with, you know, some mini fan noise and all that. In that case, yes, this is amazing productivity. It, it can take up to 9, 10 watts of power. So you can see it's, it's super important in that sense. Now, if you're totally to, you know, top of the line gaming model, this Intel Nook 13 X Team Kit is kind of one of the best option available. We are looking at Office PC plus a home lab option. Now, if you look at the operating system installed here, you can see that Windows 11 installed fine. Two network card drivers were manually installed. Uh, links are in the description if you're looking to download it. Proxmox, no issue, it just works. Tested, not just Ubuntu installation, install Docker, container, just run fine. It's, it's a pretty small daemon, which does all that. Trueness, scale, no issues, install just fine, recognize all the drives and everything. Network card is working well. And finally, the VMware. If VMware works, then you know that device is really, really good. For under $200, I was not aware there is another 2022 model of you know VMware device available. So this one will install VMware 8 version just fine. No issue. For trueness scale, NAS implementation, I would suggest that put it as a virtual machine under Proxmox and pass through the hard disk. That would be the best option. Now here are the three operating system where it failed due to no network card driver. First was Windows Server 2022. It did not recognize the driver. Second, Open Media Vault. In general, I have seen that Open Media Vault is very finicky about network card driver, though it uses like very less resources compared to trueness scale. So it's usually a good option. And if you're looking, you know, automated way to create the network drives and all that. In that case, it's, it's a better option to use OMV. PFSense, same. Uh, at this point, there are no network card drivers. Now let's do quick unboxing. Then we'll install memory and disk. This is how the box came with. And this is the SATA connector. The PC look like these are the fins. This is HDMI, this is DP, two USB 2 port, four Ethernet ports. Having four and network port, allows you to do a lot of stuff. You can configure it as a soft router. And then we have DC input for 12 volts. You can see USB-C, USB-3, this is the SD card slot. Finally, the power button. Plus you have the Wi-Fi knockout hole, which we're talking about. So two SATA ports are there. You can practically take two wires out of this and connect it to a normal hard disk outside. Uh, two disk enclosure or something, bare bone enclosure. And you can basically create a TrueNest setup. Uh, for your you know, regular NAS needs. So this is aluminum, so it's gonna uh, dissipate heat. Opening is pretty straightforward. Putting NVMe disk. You can see there's some wobble there. I'm putting the 32 GB RAM, just single slot. Opening and closing is pretty easy. Let's connect power. And you can see the power consumption is about 13 watt idle when nothing is installed. Passmark score is not that great. It's pretty good for running a simple, you know, home PC or small home lab, running a few containers. Shouldn't be a problem. For last 20 minutes, I've been running this uh, Blackmagic proxy generator which is creating a pretty good load on the system. And you can see the power usage is very constant when CPU is 100%, power is always 23 watts of power it's taking. So if I take the temperature of the wood, you can see it's almost 69 back, the temperature on the bottom side. The temperature is almost 108. There is no thermal throttling. Temperatures are pretty good. So if I play this 4K 60 FPS video, how many frames are getting dropped? Almost, uh, this is almost like 
seven to eight percent frames are getting dropped in this case. So for about two sixty dollar, this is not a bad combination where you can run a office PC or even you know a small lab to test out different scenarios. The Proxmox, VMware, TrueNAS, all is supported, so that makes it a very very good NAS option. So very efficient power consumption as well as no noise. This is not an affiliate product review. I paid from my own pocket. If this content was useful to you, please like it, help spread the words, subscribe it and share with your friends. Thank you and appreciate you watching.